Alrighty, what is going on my fellow gamblers? Today we are here with the full build guide for the upcoming 5 star character Boot Hill. So Boot Hill will be releasing along with the Fushuan rerun at the second half of 2.2, right after the Robin and Topaz banner. So, so just like my other build guides, this video will be going over Boot Hill's kit, Boot Hill's Eidolons, the best Lycons you want to use, the best relics, and we'll also have disclaimers because there's some stuff you should and shouldn't do for building Boot Hill right now. And that also does apply to when 2.2 releases. So definitely make sure you do watch this video throughout the entire video length. So before I get into the video, drop a like, drop a sub, hit the bell icon for more videos like this. I already got a build guide for Robin you can check out, Topaz you can check out. You're watching Boot Hill and I soon will have one for Fushuan. So stay tuned for that and let's get straight into the video. So Boot Hill is a physical character following the path of Hunt. His basic attack deals physical damage equal to 100% of Boot Hill's attack to a single target enemy. And now for his skill. Forces Boot Hill and a single target enemy into the standoff state. Boot Hill's basic attack gets enhanced and he cannot use the skill, lasting for two turns. This duration reduces by one at the start of Boot Hill's every turn. The enemy target in standoff becomes taunted. When this enemy target slash Boot Hill gets attacked by the other party in standoff, the damage they receive increases by 30% slash 15%. After this target is defeated or becomes weak to broken, Boot Hill gains one stack of Procket Trick Shot, then dispels the standoff. This skill cannot regenerate energy. After using the skill, the current turn does not end. So yeah, when you do pop the skill, you will lock the enemy you choose to lock into standoff into a duel. Meaning you can only attack them and they can only attack you. You still will be prone to be taking attacks from other people, but later you'll see he has a thing to reduce that. Now for his enhanced basic attack, deals physical damage equal to 220% of Boothill's attack to a single target enemy. The enhanced basic attack cannot recover skill points and can only target the enemy that is in standoff. For his ultimate, applies physical weakness to a single target enemy lasting for 2 turns. Deals physical damage equal to 400% of Boothill's attack to the target and delays their action by 40%. So yes, you can implant physical weakness onto a target that doesn't have it, which makes him that much more powerful. And after his talent, each stack of pocket trick shot increases the enhanced basic attack's toughness reduction by 50%, stacking up to 3 times. If the target is weakness broken when the enhanced basic attack is used, based on the number of pocket trick shot stacks, Deals break damage to this target equal to 70% slash 120% slash 170% of Boothill's physical break damage. The max toughness taken into account for this damage cannot exceed 16 times the base toughness reduction of the basic deck skull for Spurs. After winning the battle, Boothill can retain Pocket Trick Shot for the next battle. For his technique, after using the technique, when casting the skill for the first time on the next battle, applies the same physical weakness to the target as the one induced by the ultimate last two turns. So yes, with this technique active, you can indeed apply the physical weakness, the same one that the alt does for two turns, by using a skill for the first time. Now for his bonus traces, his first one, when in standoff and gaining pocket trick shot, regenerates 10 energy. Can also trigger this effect when gaining pocket trick shot stacks that exceed the max limit. Second one reduces the damage this character receives from targets that are not in the standoff by 30%. As I mentioned previously, anyone that is not in standoff that attacks Boo Hill will deal 30% reduced damage. And now for his actually insane third trace, Increases the character's crit rate slash crit damage by an amount equal to 10% slash 50% of break effect. Up to a max increase of 30% slash 150%. So just by break effect alone, you are already going to be able to shred through people's bars, but they reward you for giving him a lot of break effect because you can get up to 30% crit rate and a 150% crit damage, which is actually insane. Now for his Eidolons, his first one, when the battle starts, obtains one stack of pocket trick shot. When Boothill deals damage, ignores 16% of the target enemy's defense. The second Eidolon, when in the standoff and gaining pocket trick shot, recovers one skill point and increases break effect by 30%, lasting two turns. Can also trigger this effect when gaining pocket trick shots that exceed the max limit, but cannot trigger repeatedly within one turn. His fourth Eidolon, when the enemy target in standoff is attacked by Boothill, the damage they receive additionally increases by 12%. When Boothill is attacked by the enemy target in the standoff, the effect of him receiving increased damage is offset by 12%. And for his 6th Eidolon, when triggering the talent's break damage, additionally deals break damage to the target equal to 40% of the original damage multiplier, and additionally deals break damage to adjacent targets equal to 70% of the original damage multiplier, so it does sort of make him this AoE now. Now moving on to his best Lycons, so sadly as Boohill is this strange character for Hunt, he is a break effect character. If you do look at the list, there really is no Lycons that really benefit him besides his signature one. So for the most part, the Lycons you get are usable, but nowhere near to be considered super, super good for him. 
but I will probably say there eventually will probably be a future like them that will be released summonable or maybe free. That will be for Hunt that is probably break effect related for Boot Hill. But for now, we don't really got that many options, but I'm going to give you the options you can use. So obviously, as I did mention, his best Lycone will be his signature Lycone. Because what it does is it increases the Wear's break effect by 60%. So yes, a 60% stat stick is already really, really good for him. The break damage dealt by this wear ignores 20% of target's defense, so even more defense ignoring on top of that break effect stat stick. When the wear's break effect in battle is at 150% or greater, which is going to be really easy with him, it increases their speed by 12%. So this light cone is perfect for him, giving him speed really easily by just 150% or higher break effect. Very easy to get. Ignoring 20% of target's defense is really good, because ignoring defense in this game is actually really, really good. And on top of that, you're getting a 60% stat stick to break effect, which is actually insane. That is a very, very high amount. You combine this light cone with the break effect he already gets from his, like, trace tree, and you're already at, like, a 90-ish percent. So, it's a very, very, very good light cone. This is going to be his best one. Obviously, because it is a signature one, it kind of had to make it tailor towards him. But now for some other options, one you can use sort of situationally is sword play. Since it's a 4-star, I will display it at R5. For each time the wear hits the same target, damage dealt increases by 16%, stacking up to 5 times. This effect will be dispelled when the wear changes targets. You can sort of see why, because you do lock an enemy into standoff, and then when you do hit them repeatedly, his fanning the hammer is multiple hits. So it is very easy to stack up this light cone. And at max stacks, you're going to be dealing a whopping 80% damage dealt with this light cone, which is really, really good. And since you are locking him into a standoff, this is really good light cone. Especially for elite enemies slash bosses, that's where this light cone is going to shine. But if you are sort of killing smaller enemies with Boo Hill, it does sort of lose value because you'll kill them, you'll switch, you'll lose the damage value, you'll kill the other one, you'll switch, you'll lose the damage value. But if you can't use this light cone properly, it is very good. Another option you can use on him is the Herda light cone for a hunt. I'm going to display this at R5 as well because it is free. What it does is increases the wearer's crit rate by 16% and their crit rate against enemies with HP less than or equal to 50% by an extra 16%. When the wearer defeats an enemy, their attack is increased by 40% for 2 turns. As you can tell, this does give crit rate, which Boo Hill does still want to crit, so that's fine. Mainly break effect, but again, for Hunt, there practically is nothing when it comes to break effect, besides the signature light cone. But this light cone does, again, give him crit rate, so that's nice. If they're lower than 50%, you get even more crit rate, so that's also nice. But mainly, the attack percent is also very, very nice to get. So again, this light cone isn't super, super powerful, but there practically is nothing else you can really do. Same thing will apply to this next light cone that I'm going to talk about called Final Victor. What it does is increases the wearer's attack by 20%. Again, placing this at R5 because it is free. When the wearer lands a crit hit on enemies, gains one stack of good fortune. And since he's still a DPS, you're going to want to crit on him. So having a good amount of crit rate on him, you should be able to stack this really easily. This can stack up to four times. Every stack of good fortune increases the wearer's crit damage by 12%. Good fortune will be removed at the end of the wearer's turn. Since you do attack multiple times with Boo Hill, it's also easy to stack this up, assuming you do crit them. So getting a nice amount of crit damage is also very nice. This is another light cone you can use. And then a sort of other weird option you can actually use is the subscribe for more light cone. What does is increases the damage of the wearer's basic attack at skill by 48%. This effect increases by an extra 48% when the wearer's current energy reaches its max level. Sadly, for the most part, you will be ignoring the second extra 48% because for the most part, you do want to be using his ultimate because his ultimate hits really hard, it implants physical weakness, and it delays the enemy's action. So you don't want to save it by any means, but there are times where you'll save it for the next wave or something. So the little times you do do it will deal even more damage, but it's mainly because you get a 48% increase in damage for your basic attack. And since he's using enhanced basic attack, it applies to that. Not the greatest option, probably on the weaker side of all the ones I mentioned, but... It is an option you can't use. Moving on to his best relics, there is a new relic set that is seeming to come out during 2.3, which is going to be Boo Hill's best in slot. So I do not recommend going out your way to hard farm these. I'd recommend just using what you have or at least getting a usable set to use because you don't want to end up farming a bunch of these and then end up getting another set that releases that is way better for him, tailored towards him. So I definitely recommend just getting a usable set, usable pieces, and then just waiting for the new set before you actually end up hard farming for his relics. But the relics I do recommend is mainly for every part here, the best thing you can do is running two pieces of either break effect relic sets. Because you do want to have a bunch of break effect on him. You can do two piece break effect, two piece break effect, that also works. I'd recommend just getting two piece break effect and combining that with something like two piece of the physical set or two piece of musketeers. Physical set gives you physical damage. And Musketeers gives you 12% attack, that's also nice. Another thing you can actually do, but it's probably on the weaker side as well, 
is four piece musketeers because it gives you the attack from the two piece you get increased to speed and basic attack damage increases by 10 percent and since he does use basic attacks it is another nice option for his planner ornaments the best one is going to be the break effect one because giving 60 percent break effect for free is nice that's as much as the two piece on one of the other relics and when you do have 145 speed or higher the wearer's break effect increases by an extra 20 percent which is really really good 36 percent break effect just from this two piece planner ornament is very very nice and getting to 145 speed is pretty doable because you will be usually pairing him with ruan mei who does give speed but even if you don't have ruan mei to pair it with he alone has a very high base speed of 107 so it is pretty easy to get to breakpoint and if you do sort of go for the speed rolls you can actually hit this by himself another option you can do is glamoth because i mentioned you are going to be running him with ruan mei so getting him to a higher amount of speed is going to be really nice Getting the 12% attack increase is also very nice, and then when you have 135 speed or higher, you do 12% more damage. 160 speed or higher, which more on the less realistic side, that's 18% more damage. It becomes very realistic if you do have an optimal thing where you have his signature light code giving him speed, and you have Ruan Mei, and you give him like speed boots and all that, then it's very easy to actually have Glamoth active. So Glamoth is a very, very good option for him as well. Next one I'm going to talk about is actually Brutalin Arena. This one is really nice because it does give 8% crit rate. And when the wearer's current crit rate reaches 70% or higher, basic attack and skill damage increases by 20%. While 70% is sort of steep on crit rate, for the most part you do want to get your DPSs to be able to crit consistently. So getting up to 70% crit rate should be something you'd want to do. But since it's break effect related, you want to focus on that less. But if you combine that with his trace that gives him 30% crit rate alone, and maybe a light cone if you are using a crit rate one, it does become more doable. And the 20% basic attack damage is going to be really, really nice. And another option is everyone's favorite, Space Ceiling Station. DPS, so it practically will always work on them if you have good rolls on them. The 12% increase is nice. Getting to 120 speed for the extra other 12% to attack is nice. And very, again, easy to do. The 24% attack is very, very nice. For the main sets on the relic, for the body, you want to get crit rate or crit damage corresponding to which one you need more. For the feet, would it definitely go speed, especially since his best planner ornaments do sort of want him to have speed. And he do an attack with him pretty often and lock more enemies in the standoff, so speed is going to be his best main stat. For the planner ornaments, on the orb, you'll be doing physical damage. And for the link rope, you'll be doing break effect. For the subsets, pretty self-explanatory, you do just want to get a lot of... So focusing mainly on break effect and also focusing on speed, especially if you don't have other sources of speed, like Ruan Mei, or if you're not getting a signature light one, you definitely want to focus on speed rolls. Then past that, anything DPS like crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent will do the trick. And so yeah, that is the full build guide for the upcoming character, Boo Hill. Let me know if you guys will be summoning for him. I doubt a lot of you guys are going to summon for him because Firefly is right after. Me personally, I care about Boo Hill infinitely more than I care about Firefly or Sam. So, I'm definitely going to be getting this guy and his light on. Yeah, again, let me know if you guys are going to summon. Let me know what your builds are looking like. And, yeah, peace out.